Okay, welcome engineering students to another session. Today is uh, Monday morning and I trust you had a good weekend, yeah? So you are ready to uh, to absorb the, the information that you are going to, uh, that's going to be related to you. So I want to pick up from where we left last time. We spent the past four weeks uh, 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 looking at uh, basics of nomenclature. Uh, hydrocarbons, uh, focusing on uh, alkanes, uh, and now uh, up to last week we were looking at, at alkanes, yeah? Alkanes, uh, by alkanes are talking about uh, functional groups that contain the double bond. So today I want to look at uh, two more functional groups, one containing the, the triple bond and another one containing the, the benzene group. So, let's begin. Huh? So, on alkyne, we're just saying uh, it is a hydrocarbon. By hydrocarbon, we're saying it is a, it's an organic compound that contains only carbon and hydrogen. So, that's why it's called a hydrocarbon. So, in this case, uh, from the name, uh, by now, I think you are now familiar with this one. So the name ALK, the first one is is short for for an alkyl, yeah, alkyl uh, substrate. Or the uh, it's a prefix uh, telling you the number of carbon atoms that uh, functional group contains. So the ALK is short for the number of carbon atoms. As you know, one is uh, meth, two is uh, two is eth, uh, three is prop. Four is but, five pent and the rest, yeah. And then um, uh, as per the IUPAC nomenclature, as you know, the the suffix represents the name uh, the yeah, the functional group. So in this case, for the alkyne, all alkynes, the name will end it with Y N E. And just to follow up on that one, we're just saying. If I'm dealing with an alkene, the name was ending with A, N, E. For an alkene, it was ending with E, N, E. So can you see here Y and E? Yeah. Yeah. So depends on uh, how you pronounce, for example, ethyne. Oh, yeah. I think that's the yeah that's the best you can pronounce. Yeah, ethyne. For for the simplest. Uh, uh, alkyne, as you know, for you to have a, a da, I mean a triple bond, the triple bond must be between two carbon atoms. So the simplest alkyne is going to contain two carbon atoms. From two carbon atoms onwards, yeah? So ethyne, that is the structure. Then uh, propyne, it's telling you prop, that is three carbon atoms, but that is four carbon atoms. And what you're going to realize is, is that from, uh, from four carbon atoms, there is more than one representation. We're talking about more than one isomer. In fact, there are two isomers which can exist. So there is uh, one in which the triple bond is on uh, between carbon number one and carbon number two. Yeah, in this case, you just call it uh, one butyl, or as we say it, perhaps I can use uh, a blue pen. You can call it but, and then you put a dash, and then a but, sorry, but one ion. So you can put the number before the functional group. Yeah? Especially when you have substituents. This is the preferred. Uh, way of representation because the number will not interfere so much with the with the substitute. For example, there is an ether, there is a, uh, there's a, another functional group. If if you put the number before the the name of the functional group, like Y and E, then it, it becomes easier to uh, to to really understand the name. So in this case, this is the second representation. Uh, this is the second isomer. For for time. one in which the double bond is between carbon number two and carbon number three. 
So even if it's between carbon number two and carbon number three, just what we said, uh, uh, we mentioned this when we are dealing with uh, with alkenes, that you usually mention the first carbon atom containing the, the functional group. So in this case, if, if it's a double bond is between carbon number two and three, then you say it is a it is a it's an alkene uh, on uh, it, the double bond is on carbon number two. So in this case, you're going to say the triple bond is on carbon number two. You understand? So this is butyne uh, two butyne or but two ion. Yeah, simple. Yeah. So the same thing, um, uh, if I'm just going to have uh, functional groups, uh, no, substituents, for example, like uh, methyl, ethyl, on, uh, on the alkyne, they're just going to follow the same uh, uh, priority uh, numbering as for uh, alkenes. What is that priority numbering? That you need to keep the the functional group in the, which in this case yeah, is the triple bond it having the lowest number so in this case in this case here so you're going to number from from this side as to give this triple bond the, uh, the lowest number you're not going to uh, to number from here so if i'm going to have uh, uh, such a structure of which i'm going to, to do it like this one let me give that an example one two three four five six Seven, eight. Aha. Now, a triple bond. Uh, you don't draw it a zigzag like a like a double bond. So, so you're not going to draw. Please do not draw like this. Yeah. For example, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So you don't. This is not the way we draw. We draw the triple bond. Yeah. That that the bond angle of the triple bond is at 180 degrees. Will you remember that? The bond angle is 180 degrees. Let me see what I've got. Uh, uh, just wait a minute. Should have gotten... Uh, 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 the triple bond. Okay, there is one representation. Uh, uh, okay, okay, there is one representation here, but I'm just trying to look at the other one with the with the many balls. But I think uh, it's it could be somewhere. In this case, you are this just showing uh, showing something like a triple bond. Uh, just take this one of another atom. Just take the 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 black balls as carbon. So there is a there's a there's a bond here, there's a bond, there's a bond here, and there's another bond here. So later we're going to be looking at those uh, uh, properties. Uh, once we are through with the nomenclature up to carboxylic acid, then later we're going to look at the properties, physical properties, and also um, uh, uh, uses of these uh, organic compounds. But in this case, what I just wanted to, to know is that is that uh, from the triple bond, the bond angle is, is 180 degrees. So, how we are going to, to illustrate this one? If this is what you are going to have, you are going to have, uh, uh, if this is what you have, maybe I, I can put down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 9. You know this is the same as carbon with a hydrogen. So that is uh, carbon number 10. I'm, lo I'm looking at bond line structure. So is it clear? So that in this case, when there is the triple bond, you must show the line. You must show it as a, as a linear bond. So that's what you need to know. So this is not the way we, this is not the way we, we show the, yeah, the triple bond. Yeah, you don't do it like that. You don't show it like that. But you show it in a in a linear manner. So this is the same as CH3, CH3, CH2, 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 C. Please look at this one. Hey, but that's what that's something I need to, to mention. 
when the carbon has got one, two, three, and then four, that means that that carbon does not have any hydrogen. So this carbon has got one, two, three, four, four bonds, so there is no carbon here. How about this one here? This carbon has got one, two, three bonds, so there is a, there is a hydrogen implied in, in carbon number, number 10. All right? Good. So uh, that means that if you're going to have uh, substituents like maybe if I, if I put a methyl group here and then probably I put uh, I put an ethyl group here, yeah. So the numbering will just be okay. Now that's how it was numbered, but but when you're going to be getting the name. When you're going to be getting the name, you're not going to, to start numbering from there. The, the numbering will start from the from others, the uh, substrate. So in this case, it will be 1. Are you okay on that? 1, 2, number 3, number 4, number 5, number 6, number 7, number 8, number 9, and then number 10. This is numbering as far as I pack the matrix is called sun. The other one was just showing you the number of carbon atoms. But in this case, we are now numbering officially as per the IUPAC nomenclature. In this case, this is going to give the triple bond the lowest number. Yeah? And that is how we number. So, starting from this is carbon number one, number two. It is telling you that the, the methyl group is on carbon number five and the ethyl group is on carbon number, number six. So, how am I going to name that one? So, let me delete uh, this one here, the one which was uh, not the correct structure. So the substrate, you've got a metal group on carbon number 5 and an ethyl group on carbon number 6. Now, uh, even if this one is on carbon number 6, alphabetically, we begin with the E for the ethyl and then we go to, for, to, to the M. So I'm going to call it 6 ethyl. You're good, uh, and then five methyl, and then it will be what? Deck one, deck one ion. So it is six ethyl, five methyl, deck one ion. Yeah. So that's how you you're going to name that. Okay. Are you okay? So with that, let's go to the next uh, functional group that you're going to, to deal with, and that is benzene. Uh, so, so this is the information about, about uh, alkynes. So let's look at the next functional group. That one, I think, had, uh, had made a good structure. Yeah? Okay? So if I put like this, there is a double bond, a single bond, a double bond, a single bond, a double bond, and a single bond. So this structure can be said to be to be also flat. It is flat, flat on a plane. Okay. Can you see on this uh, piece of paper? Or even if I put it like this, this structure is is flat, and it is uh, a perfect hexagon with bond angles of. 120 degrees 120 degrees so on each carbon there is a there is a hydrogen yeah so there is one hydrogen so this is six carbon and six hydrogen yeah are you okay good so so this structure which i've drawn like so uh, uh, i've drawn like that one it can be shown like, like in this case this is the bond line structure in which this is equivalent to carbon, carbon double bond, carbon single bond, carbon carbon double bond, carbon uh, uh, carbon uh, single bond, carbon carbon double bond, bond. So in this case, it's implying there's a hydrogen, there's a hydrogen, there's a hydrogen, 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 yeah. And uh, and once again, this double bond is not to say it is specific to that position. This double bond, uh, so so the double bond. Uh, like in this case, the double bond is on here, but, but if it's in this form, you can say the double bond has just moved. So, so this structure is the same as this structure. 
these are called resonance structures that, that the, double, the position of the double bond and single bond, they alternate within, within the structure. Yeah? So this is the component which are going to be calling benzene. And in the nomenclature, um, if you're going to have substituents, even though I've, uh, I've, put, I've put a dash here, but, but usually it's usually one word, or perhaps you can put a dash. So this one you can call it methyl benzene. Yeah? Some people pre that's how it is, yeah. It can be methyl benzene as one word, but but if it becomes hard to read, sometimes you can put a dash. Yeah. So in, in some textbook or in most textbooks, you can see it as a, as a substituent, and then you just add the name benzene as one word. But sometimes it can be hard to to read. So if it is ethyl, I'm just going to put it as a, as ethyl benzene as one word. Yeah. Ethyl benzene. Yeah. So this is CH2, this is CH3. And then this last one is showing what if you have uh, a structure containing a, a methyl group and a methyl group. Once again, um, alphabetically, so so the E for the ethyl comes first, and then the M for the for the methyl uh, comes afterwards. So where there is the ethyl, you call that one as carbon number one. And then you number them accordingly as to give the substituent the lowest number. Yeah. So so for for example, this is one ethyl or methyl benzene. But what if, for example, what if for example the methyl group was not at that position? The methyl group was probably in this position. Yeah. So what you'll have to do will be to, to rearrange the numbering as to give the substituents the lowest number. Yeah? You're going to number them accordingly. So in this case, what I'm going to do, I'm going to start here as number one, go here number two, and then here number three. Are you okay on that? So let's see, one, two, three, four, five, and, and six. So what will be the name for that structure? It will be what? It will be one ethyl. 3 methyl uh, benzene. Have you seen the difference in the structure which we had before? Where the whichever way direction you could move, the methyl group was on carbon number 3. But in this case, if I move in this form, I'm going to give the methyl group the, the lowest number. And that's what you're going to use to, to, to get the uh, the names for the nomenclature for the uh, for the alkyl groups. I'm talking about a methyl, propyl, uh, ethyl, butyl, which are attached to to benzene. Okay. All right. So I think uh, that's the much I'll talk about these two functional groups. That is the alkyl, and also for the for the benzene. Now. Um, when you'll be looking at properties, you're going to see uh, the benzene compounds, they're normally called by the name aromatic compounds. Uh, it's just a name which, which came uh, from the fact that a lot of compounds which, uh, which, which release aroma in food, they contain the benzene structure. But, but not all the compounds which... Uh, which contain benzene structure, they they contain uh, they produce an aroma in food, yeah. But but that word uh, uh, is going to stick. But now we are going to come up with with uh, or I think it's not in your in your what do you call it within your scope as to the the properties of what you call aromatic compounds. That for a compound to be called aromatic, there are certain criteria. Which uh, which it needs to be uh, which it needs to, to be for, uh, which needs to, to fulfill to be called an aromatic compound. But now I think we're just going to call this one as as a benzene compound. Yeah, yeah. So this was the the benzene structure, methyl benzene, ethyl benzene, and this one has got uh, two substrates on it. And I think we've learned how to uh, how to name it. So we'll just stop there.
and then uh, we'll proceed with uh, with the other function group. We'll begin with uh, in a short while. I'm going to begin with the with the alkyl halides. It means that uh, alkyl and we also deal with uh, uh, when the halogen is is attached to the to the benzene group. So those are going to be called uh, aromatic uh, halides as opposed to the uh, aliphatic. Aliphatic is when there is no benzene structure. Yeah? So we're going to be looking at those uh, 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 those functional groups and then we'll look at other functional groups as well. So in a short while, we'll be looking at the comp compounds containing the, uh, uh, the halogen. We're talking about fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine attached to the uh, either an alkane or, or to a benzene structure. So we'll just stop there and I hope you enjoyed this, uh, this class. Yeah? Thank you.